Um, all right, what I'd like to do this evening is to uh, really speak to, I could say, the theme of the future of higher education, but to do so in a, not in a prescriptive way, but more in a kind of larger, a larger way, which really addresses the question of, you could say, but what is this enterprise that we're actually doing? What is it all about? We welcome you to the Arthur Zions Lecture on Contemplative Education. This annual lecture honors Arthur's groundbreaking work in physics and the humanities, his commitment to teaching, and his vision of colleges and universities as places where meaning and purpose are tightly interwoven with intellect and action, where compassion and care are infused with insight and knowledge. Knowledge is not an object that you acquire. It's not a, it's not a, a mechanism that somehow you, you, you provide uh, to, the, to the human mind. It's actually an epiphanal moment. If science is, as I'm saying, you know, born out of these epiphanies, then I think the reflective and contemplative has a lot to offer, not only cultivation of attention, but even as a mode of inquiry, even as a way of knowing, which is, after all, the central project that universities and colleges are engaged in. For the last 40 years, Arthur Zions has worked at the intersection of modern physics, humanities, and contemplative traditions. As Emeritus Professor of Physics at Amherst College and Scientific Coordinator and past president of the Mind and Life Institute, he has built a body of work that includes research on the foundations of quantum physics, the relationship between science and the humanities, and the practice of contemplative education and inquiry. You know, how is it we, we guide our lives and conduct our lives? Uh, where do we find our next step? And especially for students who are forming their lives, the contemplative as a means of inner guidance, you know, that you really begin to weigh and sort out your values gently and reflectively can be of huge help. If we are committed to knowledge, then we ought to be committed also to exploring the world with these lenses, with this method in mind and heart. If we're going to have a perspective which is whole, then we need to bring all of our capacities to the issues that we, can, that we confront, spiritual capacities as well as more conventional sensory-based intellects and the like. At SeaMind, the Center for Contemplative Mind and Society, Arthur served as the founding director of the academic program and later as executive director. His accomplishments in these roles include initiating the annual summer sessions on contemplative teaching and learning, founding the Association for Contemplative Mind in Higher Education and its annual conferences, and leading retreats for educators. And so what's the pedagogy? You know, what's the pedagogy for the end of suffering? I mean, this is like, you know, <laughs> okay, we're going to do the end of suffering, you know? <laughs> but I think you have to actually reach out that direction. You have to reach somehow that far. It's all right. As long as it's not filled with pride and hubris, it has some modesty about it. And even if we just take a little step in that direction. I think that when we take up the practice of contemplative pedagogy, the work that we're doing here, we're not just doing a little add-on. It seems to me that when we introduce this modality, we're trying to address that deep-set ignorance. So this is a revolution in higher education, I hope, that takes us into the future. And to be in the presence of it when I'm here with you all is a special grace and privilege. Thank you very much. So life is, is uh, dense, but we need to calm ourselves, get clear, get quiet, direct attention, sustain the attention, open up to what is normally invisible, and certain things begin to show themselves, maybe gently to begin with, but nonetheless, it deepens and enriches our lives. No matter how deeply we engage the world, no matter how far we manage to penetrate into the mystery, there will always be more mystery. 
It's always deeper, it's always bigger, but it's always an invitation. The mystery is a kind of invitation in. Find the door.